Rhonda Maureen, I'm 30 years old from Latin St. David. How long have you been a farmer? Uh, about two and a half years. Started as a hobby, recreational, and then we we'll realize the opportunity it goes by, and then that's why we expand, as you can see, and we turn it to a business. Tell us about the crops yeah. that you plant. Uh, we specialize in more peppers and vine crop like melons, honeydew. Red melon. But we try to put in some other crops in between, but we specialize like in peppers and watermelon and vine crops. Mm -hmm. And why those crops? Uh, well, when we start well as recreation, we realize that we see a demand for peppers and honeydew melons, so we decide to capitalize on that and strictly focus on two, three crops rather than trying to be all over the place. So at least we can be consistent and you know, develop a reputation I always have and when so, well, people need. And what do you supply to? Uh, supermarkets, hotels, but like you see right now during the COVID period, you see we don't have any vine crops right now because the demand dropped. So we just try to experiment in other crops, but still keep what we're known for as the peppers. Yeah, but mostly hotels, a little bit of local vendors too, yeah, but hotels and supermarkets. Yeah. As you mentioned COVID, um, how, oh. how has that been for you as a farmer? What were some of the challenges that uh, you exposed you to? Yeah, a lot of challenges. For example, if we used to move eight crates a week, we dropped to probably like four, sometimes two. You know I mean, the spending power people are just not really there, the demand not really there, but you know, we still keep on the feet and we still do what we had to do. You know, we just restructure how we plant and you know how we go forth our business. You know, instead of planting probably like 50 trees and peppers or whatever, we cut it down to 15 or 20, you know, so you had to restructure your business. I'm sure that's all business doing right now too, right? I even sell if you had a, or we should say, put thing on sale. You know, instead of selling something for six, you might have to sell it for four. You know what I mean? Restructure, yeah. That's what it is. What would you say um, the pandemic has taught you as a farmer? Well, you see, I learned a lot of things from my full-time full -time job, right? And farming is a business too. So I try to use some of those techniques. Well, it is a business. This is a business. Just because it's farming, you're planting, or you just plant all over the place. You still have to do things strategically, right? So I learned a lot of, like I said, restructuring, um, managing your risk. You don't want to... For example, as you see, hotels are closed right now. So you don't want to go and plant 50 trees of watermelon, you know, that's going to spoil it. You wouldn't even move that amount in a month. So you kind of restructure how we do How do you plants. balance your work life with your family? All right. Well, you see, all my colleagues over there, both of us started as a partnership and as a hobby. Right? So I won't consider them as a work uh, a partnership. Right, so simple. I mean, I, I give him the authority to, to make certain decisions on his own, you know, to, um, to make moves on his own. It delegate, simply. It delegate. I mean, it, it's both of us business. I'm not going to like, oh, I have a full time job and so I'm, I'm not supposed to seek interest. Of course, I seek interest, but I give him the authority to, and I trust him enough to be able to, to, to handle on his own, so to speak. How would you how would you explain a farming day? Well, since we since we everybody has a role to play, right? And we delegate tasks, so everybody responsible for something. So for me, I keep the books. Maybe there's some time to harvest. I'll do the deliveries. I'll do the orders, etc. He may he full time in the garden. So in terms of you know the weeding, plowing, etc., he does that. So everybody has their role and fit in well. So we don't really have any challenge or you know in terms of getting tasks done what would you say like most about what you do um, in the farm being creative you know uh, at the drawing board you know we come up with ideas and plans and we try to execute it in a time frame you know and watching what we plan execute 
it's fun, you know, watching it manifest. I, I, like, I like that idea. What is your best farming technique? For example, right? The beans. You know, usually farmers, they usually put sticks to, to prop up the beans, right? This is a technique. See, we use the strings. We string along. Tomatoes in the back, too. All the farmers use sticks. We use the strings. That saves time. You know, because this is a big plot. A big plot of land, so save time. So, I mean, that's, a, that's one of the techniques. Uh, in terms of the farming business, I want to be dominant. I want to take over the game. We do things differently, not your traditional farmer, you know? We do things strategically, we plan, we, we keep records, we manage everything. Not only just to, to serve the local market, you know, um, something we've been, we've been talking about, me and the guys. Even export, even export, so not just, okay, this is it, you know, if we, if you're gonna be in it, we're gonna be in it 100. So, you know, hopefully, we'll see. You know. How prepared are you in terms of um, produce if COVID restrictions were lifted by the end of the year? We plant in stage, right? So we have big plot of land. Um, probably half of the land right now is not really occupied, and we have we have crops so that right now we have crops that we're about to plant. So. We, we plan for the entire year, you know, we know, we, we check the period, okay, from from the sowing period to planting stage to, to, to harvest time, we take all of that into consideration and we try to utilize the land to its full potential. You see there are growing that are being prepared right now, there are growing that are about to be prepared, you know what I mean, so we in uh, September, right. So, for instance, end of September, if we plan something, an item, you know, probably end of December, you yeah, get it. Next month, we're going to plan something again. So, you know, that's going to come in end of January. So, we try to plant in a, in a way that we'll always have something to sell rather than having a downtime. One of the challenges getting reliable people. Yeah, that's, that's, that's one of the biggest challenges for us. And even if we get people, uh, the quality of work, the performance, mediocre, you know? That's one of the challenges, getting reliable, honest people to do a job. And we pay well. You know? In relation to what you just said, what do you oh. think is lacking um, oh. in farming today as it relates to maybe labor, uh, planting Uh, I think it's organization. Uh, what I can say from well, I mean I just start but organization farmers they don't they don't work collectively you know everybody tend to just do their own thing they don't plan strategically as you can see probably uh, a certain time of the year is you see a surplus a particular crop and then again you see a shortage you know what I mean so like everybody do the same thing at the same time and that's how I try to differentiate myself you know what I mean that's what I realized so, and a lot of them, they don't, they don't treat it as a business. All they think, see, okay, you're coming in line. Oh, I feel to, I feel to put on 10 tree of tomatoes to the, uh, you know what I mean? They don't, they don't plan strategically and they don't organize and everybody tend to just do their own thing. So that's why sometimes, oh, um, I don't know what happened in sales slow, sales slow, but I mean, you, you don't try to separate yourself. Everybody try to do the, the same thing based on the season. See, they don't plant tomatoes, they just tend to stay in the safe zone. You know what I mean? Me, I go against the green. You're pretty young, relatively. Right. Um, you would not see, right. <laughs> you would not see um, young people mm -hmm. like yourself um, much mm -hmm. young people getting into farming. Mm -hmm. um, what, what would you say was the driving force behind you getting into this? And what mm -hmm. would you say to persons uh, to get into this, this type of business? Uh, well, we started as a hobby, right? And we saw an opportunity to grow and turn it into a business, first of all. Um, for people, young people trying to get into it, um, it's not as simple as it looks. Oh, they might say, oh, there's a lot of money in farming, yada, yada, yada. You understand? You could talk the talk, but when time to walk the walk, it's different. It's different. Even myself, I was surprised. I made a lot of mistakes. You know, at times I feel like quitting, 
You know what I mean? Because it's not as easy or simple as it looks. You know what I mean? You might walk past a, a garden and you might say, oh, the, this crop's looking real nice, etc. But you don't know how many losses that farmer took. You know what I mean? You don't know how many, how many times he had to replant, etc. Sometimes it might look good. No, next week, pass back, both stuff gone to the ground. So, I mean, a lot of challenges are not as simple as it looks. You have to be dedicated. Uh, you can't just do it for the money. You have to, you have to love it. You have to have some sort of passion for it and persistent. Yeah, that's how I tell them. As it stands from then to now, mm -hmm. how has it been for you as a young farmer? We had a few bumps along the way. But um, like I said, you have to be persistent and you have to keep going. You can if you're gonna do something, best you do it to your full potential, give it 100, rather than 50, 80, 90 percent. Um, feeling our option for us, we don't give up. Um, we had times where we plant, uh, for example, we plant probably 23 uh, tomatoes and everything gone to, you know what I mean, gone to the ground. Some people, they're gonna, they're gonna look back, oh, the cost and the finance for that, and they're just gonna give up, but, it's something we don't do around here. That's business. Not every day or not. Not every time you're gonna expect everything to bloom. So you know we we, we try to be persistent and yeah we don't we don't give up. Yeah. How much land are you opening? Probably probably like 14 acres. Probably. You were about to receive some dragon fruit plants from the Chinese mission. Right. Why are you so interested in getting <laughs> We saw a demand for it. Um, simple, we saw a demand for it. Um, you, that's not a crop you see on your supermarket shelf every day. Probably once every six months. I mean, I, I did my research too. You have a lot of health benefits. I mean, and that's something population should, you know, should, should eat, I should say. <laughs> yeah, we saw a demand for it too. And you have a lot of health benefits, so why not? Now we have, we have land where we could grow a hundred plants, only two hundred plants. In every crisis, there's opportunity. So you see, as downtime right now, we have space. We're gonna use that as an advantage to 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 try new things and sample new crops, as I mentioned earlier. Given yeah. the cost of it on the mm. supermarket shelves, yeah. do you think that um, that Yeah, yeah, people buy. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people are health conscious these days, right? Yeah, so they will buy. You just have to educate people, make them aware the benefits of the product, and you'll see. I mean, the don't time right now, so you you, know, you wouldn't see much spending power from people, but I'm sure as time goes by, yeah, you, you're gonna see. Yeah, I seen it. <laughs> I never really thought of it, you know, but it's a good feeling. Yeah, it's a good feeling. Um, you make an impact in your community, in the country as a whole. It's a good feeling. Uh, um, times when certain product is scarce, and I know I have it, and able to supply it. I mean, it's a good feeling. You're making a difference. You're making an impact. So, yeah, it's a good feeling. Right. So I was uh -huh. gonna ask if there are any other any other crops you would be venturing into um, in the future. Yeah, of course. Uh, we see an opportunity and a demand for ginger, local ginger, and that's something we want to capitalize on. Um, this plot is about to clear soon. We're gonna do that whole section ginger only. Um, as I mentioned earlier on, we're not going to box ourselves in and oh, okay, you know, think about the local market, etc. We're trying to make it bigger and you know, export as well. Um, I do a lot of traveling too and I ask questions. We so realize, you know, there is a demand. I mean, just like source up. So, yeah, we're going to capitalize on that. Thank you so much.
and the dragon fruit. Hopefully, you know. Any issues with um, granulas? Huh? In the beginning, we had, but um, you know, we take um, we take precautions and we put a lot of things in place. We're not going to discuss here in order to, you know, to minimize, you know, yeah, minimize that. Any business you had to expect, you know. So that's why you had to put things in place to, to prevent or minimize that, and that's what we did, and we still continue to do.